Coming up on Unpacked. What did you see that made it appealing to you? People were posting this and this, different stuff, and then I was like, wow, I want to be that. I just told them I want a natural looking silhouette. I don't want anything out of the ordinary. I want a white skin tone. I mm. love what I am. Mm. And then I'm still black. I love my body. I love my body so much. I wouldn't change it for anything, but I'll never go back. Enhancing your body to change its features. Both of our guests are here to share their stories. Let's unpack. Toli Kabashe, also known as Miss XO, is a digital content creator who is passionate about beauty and lifestyle. In 2021, she publicly shared her journey to getting a Brazilian butt lift. Having shown the ups and downs of the procedure online, it was successful. Awelani Nemahui is a mother of four who works as a part-time corporal in the military. Two years ago, she started lightening her skin and has never looked back. She has since gone on to develop and sell her own range of skin brightening products. These are their stories. Let's unpack. Oli, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Awelani, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming through. Thank you for having me. So I'm going to start with you, Oli. What, mm. what was your upbringing like in terms of just your relationship with the idea of beauty? What did you see and experience around you? Okay, let me just put, my mom is, is, is a very beautiful woman. She's, she's a big, bold, um, full-figured woman. So beauty to me was what I saw from her. But also, I, I also saw that growing up, um, it changed for me because of like school and what people um, were perceiving of you in mm. a sense of I was tall, fairly tall, well, I'm tall. Mm. And I was kind of big boned as well. So I was teased about it. And what I saw from my mom like changed because of my high school years. Mm. So later on, I wanted to um, not have what happened in the past, like, come out. But mm -hmm. I wanted to still be seeing this, the same thing that I saw from my mom. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, it changed in the years growing up, but also it was not a good change. So mm -hmm. I guess that is what's made me go to um, do the whole procedure because mm -hmm. of what I was initially seeing mm -hmm. until people changed it for me and so, put it into what they wanted. So, like, you, you describe your relationship with mom, you know, all of us girls get the biggest influences from, from our, our parents, moms. Yeah. Um, when you say that you went to school and obviously you were bullied and your perception changed, yeah. what what were you being told beautiful is that you were not? Skinny. Mm. Skinny and because I think when you're still young, like I'm not like young in a sense of maybe say grade five to maybe say grade eight or ten, mm. Skinny is what you see in newspapers. Skinny is what yeah. you see in TV. Skinny is what you see in models and everything. So you're supposed to be skinny. And with me, I was a bit big. Yeah. So it was like they called me a giant. And plus, I'm tall. So I was the tallest in my class. So that kind of sort of contributed to it. But as much as I'd go, me and my mom had a very, very close relationship. Mm -hmm. So I'd go to my mom and tell her what happened to school. And then my mom's, like I said, she's a very bold, big woman. She'd be like, Bayaslanya, look at me. And then she'd strut and be like, mm -hmm. yes, this is what I want. But also, I see it now. And mm -hmm. then I go back to school, it's the same thing over and over again. So skinny was just the number one perceived mm -hmm. thing. I think even now, even though we are grown and I'm a grown woman now, and I see that, okay, skinny is not or a bigger woman or ever, but every single woman is beautiful. But at that specific moment in my life, mm. a skinny woman was perceived as amazing. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, And on your side, Awelani, what was your upbringing like? Because you're from Venda. Yes. And most people in Venda are actually dark-skinned. Did you uh, have a different kind of idea of what beauty is or what did you see when you were growing up? Uh, myself, when I see beauty, beauty starts from within. Mm. I have to accept myself who I am then I will know how I want to be on the outer look. Yes. Yes, of course, I am. I was dark. Mm. My upbringing, I was dark. And then what inspired me more about enlightening myself, it was that I accepted what I was before, mm. and then I just wanted to enhance myself more. Let's take a step back mm -hmm. to when you were a child, because you've got sisters. Yes, I You do. know, 
when you're a child, when you would look at your sisters and look at friends and people outside of the family, in your mind, what was going on in that little girl's mind about how she thinks of herself and beauty? In my mind, when I was growing up, I wanted to be lighter. My mm. mom is light-skinned, mm. very much, mm. from for, for even now when she's old. Mm. So I always want like, wow, why can't I have my mom's skin? Mm. And all of us at home, we are five, but there is no lighter one in complexion. Mm. So, so you all took Papa's gene? Yeah, we all took Papa's gene, our yeah. grandma and, and everyone. So, w- so when you saw Mama, and I, I can get it, because as little girls, we look up to our moms. Outside of that, did you see her being treated differently because she was light-skinned or did you just want to look more like your mom? Yes, she was treated uh, differently because most especially when we go maybe to church, we say, oh, is this your child? Wow, why is your child not looking like you? So Mm. it triggered me on my mind like, wow, why are they saying I am not her child? Because she's lighter, Mm. I am dark like dark. Mm. So that's where I started the journey to enlighten Mm. my skin. Mm. And then I was not too much focused on what the outlooker are saying to me. Because Don't don't even worry about that. (laughs) Let's let's focus on on you being, because I'm I'm trying to get an understanding, you know, from both of you ladies. Because anybody who does any type of enhancement, even a person who just puts makeup on, will automatically be judged that you don't love yourself. And I'm trying to lay the foundation of who you are as women before we see any of the enhancements that you've mm. made or done. So in terms of you as a, as a little girl, you know, what, did you think you, uh, uh, did you see yourself as a happy child? Did you see yourself as someone loving themselves? Or were you always this child who, I don't look like my mom, so I don't like who I am? Yes, I can say I wasn't happy about my appearance, most especially on the skin lightening uh, mood. I wanted to be uh, lighter in skin. Mm. And yes, obviously, it was the most problem on me Mm. when I grew up that I wanted more to be light Mm. in complexion. That's when I started Mm. to brighten myself. How did your sisters feel about being dark and their moms and your mom being light skinned? I think they were happy with it because uh, they didn't have choice to be born black or Mm. white. So it was all about choice, how you Mm. feel within yourself Mm. and how you see yourself. Mm. So what are some of of the things, Tolly, that your mom would say to you? You already said she'd say, leave those people, Mm. look at me. But how would she console you? Because we know kids can be mean in that environment of wanting to belong. Our poor moms do their best to make their voices heard, but unfortunately, others can be louder. How did she console you and encourage you? You know, my mom's a very bold and I nearly said crazy, I'm sorry, but she's, <laughs> she's, 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 she's wild. So this one time she went to school and she literally said, pinpoint every single person that comes for you. So I literally told, and she went to go tell them off. It stopped, wow. yes, she doesn't take. What would she say to them? I don't remember. I, I think I was standing from a distance mm. and then she lined them all up. She didn't care. Mm. The teachers were there. She didn't care. She, she doesn't play with the child. I'm, I grew up being the only one. So yeah. she didn't play with me. So she lined them all up and told them whatever she told them. And then it stopped from then. And then, but continuously, I think she tried to make me feel better about myself because I remember in grade nine, mm. I started loving makeup. So she took me to MAC. I remember that day so clearly. Mm. She took me to MAC. I got my first pressed powder mm. from MAC with her and a, lip, and a lipstick, yes. It was Ruby Woo. First lipstick, and then she was like, "You, if you want to feel pretty, just let me know whatever you want. I'm here for you. You're the most beautiful girl. Her affirmations and stuff. So she's she's very, like, hell-bent in me being... Mm. So she did everything that she possibly could for her to, like, make me feel okay about me being a big girl. And, you know, yes. so, yeah, she, she she's amazing. And what are some of the things your mom would say to you when you were growing up, when you'd say, Mama, I also want light skin? Uh, my mom, she wasn't too much into encouraging me into light or anyhow. Remember, I come from uh, rural Limpopo in mm. Venda. So such kind of thing is not something that your mom would know or say you can do this mm. to be lighter. She just have to comfort you or maybe redirect you to do something else that can make you happy. Mm. Of which, when I grew up, I also did some contesting mm. in school. So those are the things that were keeping us busy, mm. except to say she's encouraging me to go makeup I came from I come from Venda so makeup it was so way far away from me up mm. to the stage mm. when I'm old 
Mm. So how did you get introduced to this thing called skin lightening? Tell me about the first time you found out Hore eating. Oh, the skin lightening to me, it came in 2019. That was... Is that the first time you heard about skin lightening yes, in your life? in my life. Mm. All this time I could see people uh, lightening their face, but I didn't have an idea what's going on here. So that was in 2019 when I started to have the introduction to the skin lightening. And how did you find out about it? I found out on social media, people were posting this and that, different stuff. And then I was like, wow, I want to be that. Mm. Mm. So when when you found out about it, was your understanding that it, you just toss a cream and you get light? My my understanding, it was like, I have, it's either I have to go surgery, of which surgery I do not afford. Mm. I had to buy products, different products to enlighten my skin, mm. of which I did go through different products before I became what I am mm. now. Today. And for you, Koli, when was the first time you ever heard of Brazilian butt lift or BBL for short? I've always been a YouTube person mm. from a very, very young age. Because like I said, when I started like actually wearing makeup or starting it was in grade nine. So when you go to YouTube and just like search, maybe say search for how to do your eyebrows. Yeah. And then the suggested might be a PBR or whatever, whatever. And then I remember I saw it once. Um, I was watching a YouTube video for makeup and then I saw it, started following it. And then I was like, oh, people can actually change the way they look. Mm -hmm. But I was still young. I just didn't understand how it's done, but I just let it go. Yes. And then it came back again when I was 21. But I was like, let me wait mm -hmm. until I am of a certain age. And I am, I want to, I want to say 21, you're still fairly young and your yeah. body changes. And now I think I'm, I'm more adapted to my woman body because now yeah. I'm 28. So I was like, Your me, grown self. Yeah, my grown self. Because yes. I was just like, I'm, a, I'm still going to grow. I'm still going to change mm. this and that. So I was like, let me wait. So it's, it started fairly, fairly, fairly young. But I didn't pay much attention. Mm. I was just intrigued that, wow, people actually do change their body. But I'm in grade nine. It didn't mm. click that, you know. Mm. So mm. at a later stage, that's when it, it came back. What did you see that made it appealing to you? At that time when you started seeing BBL yeah. videos. The fact that you can actually change your body instead of not doing a lot of things. You can just get onto a table after an hour, you're done. That mm. to me was like, wow. I don't have to waste my time at the gym. Mm. I don't have to eat certain type of foods. I can just go. They suck whatever they're sucking out, put it there, and I'm out. Mm. So that was... I think the quick fix part of it is the one that intrigued me because I was just like, people are going to see me today. They're going to see that I'm big and I'm, I'm a giant. Mm. But tomorrow I'm going to come back with the hips and a bum. And, and it's, I'm just like, It's so go. interesting that, yeah. that um, that's your experience because, you know, when I would go online and just, you know, observe your journey and your YouTube videos, I see you as a tiny... As a tiny woman, you know, you are... And I, it, it's all about perception, obviously, about the petiteness. You've got a small waist. This is prior to your surgery. So I'm curious, um, what about your body? Because this whole time you're like, people are going to see me as a giant. And now this procedure has to do with basically redistributing fat. Mm -hmm. What about your body or its shape did you want to change that you were not happy with? My love handles were... Crazy. I have. Mm. I had love handles mm. and hip dips. Mm. Absolutely hate it. What are hip dips? Hip dips is when your hips go in, like. Oh, uh, yeah. So, so it's like. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it's not. It's. So it's not a hourglass. Not an hourglass, but it's like it's they more go straight. in. They yes. Yeah, I was yes. straight. Literally, I have yes. an athlete's body. Yeah. So I was straight. I had hip dips, and I was just like, I don't like that. Yes. I really don't like that. Also, my love handles. I tried every single thing possibly you mm. could imagine. Mm. I went to lipo, uh, muscle lipolysis, gym, eating healthy. Yes, with me, my body is, when I gain weight, I gain everywhere, especially my arms and my love handles. So I was just like, mm. I don't want to lose everything because also I want to have that feminine thing where yeah. I have bums, I have hips, mm. and you know, that hourglass thing. So the hip dips and the love handles were driving me insane. Mm. So I was just like, you know what, they have to go. Yeah. They, they have to go. So when did you start doing research into... Because now you say, oh, I see this thing, mm -hmm. I'm interested in it, mm -hmm. but not now because mm -hmm. I'm still young. I started when I was 21. Mm -hmm. I remember there's a video of me on YouTube when I went to Dr. Nandi and I was talking about it. I was 21 years old. And then 22, 23, I did my research, checking doctors. 
I didn't find any that I like. But also I always say, like, things happen, like, some things happen for a reason. Mm. Maybe those doctors were not going to do what I wanted. And then 20, 20, 2020, that's when I did extensive, like, extensive research. I was literally calling each and every single doctor you could mm. possibly imagine. So I found three that I liked. And then... This one, something happened to one of the patients. I was just like, no. And then the other one, I just didn't like, like she was too excessive. It was too much. Because with, with a BBL or slash liposuction, you can only take so much fat. Yes. She was taking too much. Yes. Like it was crazy. From her patients. Yeah. yeah. And I'm not saying at the end of the day, it is, it's not fake, mm. but I didn't want to look like Mm-hmm. in your face. I wanted it to be as natural as possible because even with my butt, I didn't want it to be so huge that you can just see that, oh my God, she's, is she coming or going? Yes. I just wanted it to be natural. So with my doctor, I finally found this one in PE and I followed him. I called, I was persistent. I wanted to see results. And then that's when they started, have, they said, okay, because you want to see real, real work, we'll start our um, Instagram page. Started their Instagram page. Okay, I was seeing their work. I was following up like their patients and Funny enough, I was always talking to people that were willing to talk to me because I wanted to know how their journey was. Yeah. Because I always watched it. I was like, I think if you open my YouTube on my um, TV, mm. literally there was BBL, BBL. I wasn't watching anything else because yeah. I wanted to see if what I want to do is literally what I really wanted. Yeah. So when I found him, my heart was like, this is it. This yes. is him. We're doing it. And, yeah. and at this point, you were how old when you found him? Last year. Last year. So yeah. you were 26. 27. 27? Yeah. 27. Yeah. So in terms of in that researching process, was there anything you saw that scared you or made you reluctant? Everything made me scared, but I was like, rather. Really? Everything made me scared, but I think the, the, the thing that calmed me down was my mom. Because I remember when I, I... I think I was... The only thing I was scared of was my mom. Let me not lie to you. Mm. I was so scared of my mom. I was like, if I tell her, she's going to lose her mind. Mm. So I went to her and I was like, Ma, I'm getting surgery. She was so so excited and I was like everything else doesn't matter yeah my mom is fine but now a young uh 27 year old you actually before being a YouTube creator were in law Mm -hmm. and you decided I'm gonna try this thing out of being a creator and an influencer Yeah. yeah um so somebody watching might think to themselves how much did this cost and at what point were you like I know how much this costs it's gonna be worth it I'm gonna start saving and how did you save I'm going to be honest with you, as much as it's going to sound so crazy, I didn't save. Mm. I had savings that I, but I didn't think they were for a BBL. Mm. Not that so I... you were putting away money I just anyways. knew I'm just putting... Yeah, anyways. Yeah. So it just piled up and then I called the doctor and then this, he didn't have space. And then I think two weeks before he called me, he said I space for the 8th. I paid the very same day. How much, how much did they want? 89,000. 89,000. Because yeah. it's an elective procedure. Yeah. And um, uh, outside of the cost, you know, it has all the other risks that you have to go with. Mm-hmm. So you were able to be like, great, I've got 89,000 somewhere. Let's I'm going to pay for this. Same time. Mm. On your side. How did you research about skin lightening? Because you started seeing on social media what other people are doing. And some of them they do with a drip or injections. How did you choose what's going to be right for you? Uh, What I choose, what was going to be right for me then when I was doing my research in 2019, I went through also Google to check or most especially when it comes to skin skin changing. Mm. Some of them who are using this product, you can find them with green veins, some of them with dark undercycle, mm. some of them with uh, pigmentation. Mm. And then it also scared me though, because some of them you might find that their feet are not the same with, mm. the, with the face. So I had to go through different uh, kind of research of which some of them I did it on YouTube when I was seeing people's videos, mm. these kind of products on a later stage. It will, it will have a, an, a, an impact on this kind of results through health. This one, when you use it for too long, you're going to have this kind of a mm. problem. Maybe your skin might shrink. You will have green veins everywhere. So I had Because to, you can burn. Yes, you can burn. And you also um, don't necessarily know what's in the products. Yes. It can be um, anything that is acidic or can affect your skin later, like what you were saying. Yes. So some of the things that I had to go through to understand, it was through essential oils. 
Mm -hmm. I had to study different essential oils. This one, it works for what? Mm -hmm. It will help me with what? Mm -hmm. This one. And also vitamins, this kind of vitamin, it will help me with what through my mm -hmm. skin? And then which kind of vitamins should I use? Which kind of essential oils should I use? Which is going to have an impact on me getting mm -hmm. lighter? Mm -hmm. So those were the things that I went through mm -hmm. to research more on what oil and what kind of vitamins should I always often use mm. on my daily basis. Were you scared? I wasn't scared. I was like, I'm going for it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna be a go-getter. Yes. I'm doing it. Yes. So did you start with creams and it, ointments? Yes, I started with creams and then I had to when on a later stage I had to go through ointment, different kind of oil serums. For an example, I use overnight serums, daily creams, night creams. So it's not such a thing of just saying I'm using a cream. It has mm -hmm. to be different. Is it night one? Is it day one? Because the daily one, during the day, you are exposed into sun rays. Mm -hmm. What are you protecting yourself through mm -hmm. sun rays? Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you mentioned that because some people don't know that when you lighten your skin, you actually are more vulnerable to the sun and can burn uh, easily, not just from the products, but also from the sun from itself. The sun. So when you did your research, did some of these products say to you, stay out of the sun? Do they tell you or some of them don't tell you? No, yes. Some of the products do tell you you have to stay away from the sun. Like, mm. for an example, the overnight serum that I, I use, it doesn't allow me to use it over the day because it will be exposed through the sun yes. and it will have an impact on my skin. Mm. That is why I use it overnight. And then the daily rays during the day, I have to use the day creams. And then, of course, if I work too much on the sun, I have to use a protective sunscreen. Do you also take oral medication like pills? No, I definitely don't take pills. Yes. I only use it in the outer look. On the outer look? Yes. yes. So when did your skin start changing? My skin started to change, uh, most especially massively in early 2020. That was March. And this because was after how long? Oh, uh, the, the, this thing, it doesn't have to change rapidly. Uh, fast because mm -hmm. if you change fast people will have to worry why are you changing rapidly yeah. if you are using something obviously if you change just like that you will burn yourself mm -hmm. so it's a process it's not something that just happened overnight you need to be severe and also be patient with your skin mm -hmm. that it won't be just overnight like that mm -hmm. so it took time and then when it took time you have stages yes. the first stage i'll be glowing the second stage i'll be getting more caramel Mm. And then up to the later one where you say, no, I've reached my, 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 my likes. So, but there's no enough. So at least you did all your research, but what was the reason that you decided not to take pills or do injections? Oh, the only reason that makes me not to take pills is because I don't know what is going within me yes. when I'm taking them. And then I didn't want to have any after effects of pills yes. or injection. So I didn't really want injection at all. That is yes. why I started to change my outer look. Yes, yes. Okay, I understand what you're saying. Mm. And how did you decide? Because you say it's not enough. Um, how did you decide which a skin tone you wanted to have? Did you f look at a person and say, I want to look like so-and-so? Yes, obviously you have to look on somebody and say, mm. I want to be on that level. So at my level, I haven't reached there. I still want to look at that certain person that Kimang. I... Kimang. <laughs> I, like, I want to look like Michael Jackson one day. You want that color? <laughs> yes, I that want to level. reach to the Michael Jackson color. Really? So that's where I'm looking at now. Mm. But mm. I don't want to look... To, to do that through injection or anyhow. Yes. I just want to do it on a healthy skin tone. Because the Michael Jackson color is like white. Yes, it is white. And that's what you want? That's what I want. Mm. And then my question would be, do you want to look white or you want a white skin tone? I want a white skin tone. I mm. love what I am. Mm. And then I'm still black. Mm. And I do embrace being black. Mm. It's just that I want to be that black, that want to be light in skin. Mm. And what is your reason? What would you say? Because I understand the background and the childhood. Your mom is not Michael Jackson White. She's not. So what, why do you want to aim for Michael Jackson White? I just love who he is, what mm -hmm. he stands for. He was not ashamed for his change. 
mm-hmm. because I did also my research that he started at a certain level mm. up to what he is, and then he loved what he is, mm-hmm. and then he was happy within himself. So what, what, what makes me more happy is he accepted who he was, mm. and then he was happy with the products that he became. So that's me. I mm. am happy with what I am. And then I'm not ashamed of anything mm. and I'm proud of it. And I can say I'm still that Awerani that they say they know. And mm. even now when I'm lighter, I'm still def- I'm still the same. Mm. Nothing has changed, that's mm. my skin. So why not a tone like, let's say, a Kangin Bao? Because we all know um, she's very open about the lightning that she does. Mm. Why not that color of tone? I just wanted to be more. Mm. Mm. Yes. So in the process of you do these regimens, day, night, you keep getting lighter. Are you going to keep going till you reach the color and then you're going to maintain? Yes, obviously you have to maintain because if I don't maintain it, I will definitely look like a wizard, I'm sure. Oh, as in if you stop the If I stop, yes, because if they say you have to maintain, obviously, for an example, on a daily basis, we do brush our teeth. Yes. When you don't brush your teeth, obviously, you're going to have some dent and some other stuff. Obviously, I have to maintain my skin. Mm. to stay the le- on the level that I have achieved. How much does it cost you a month to maintain For a month to maintain my skin, it's 1300 Okay, that's not as expensive it's as I expensive. thought. It's affordable. It's affordable. Do yes. you know what impact it's having on the quality of your skin? Like, does your skin feel more rough? Does it feel softer? How does your skin feel? It feels moist. Moist. It feels moist, yes. Mm. Okay, we're going to come back because I still want to challenge this Michael Jackson <laughs> you story. <definitely> have to. <laughs> uh, if from your side, who is your ideal body type that you had in mind? Like when you go to your doctor to, to explain what shape or how much you want, who were you showing him? I swear I didn't show him anybody. Really? I told him what I wanted, yeah. Yes, and how did, you, how did you describe it? Because size is relative. There's how much you put in, there's liters, there's whatever. Mm. I just told him that, give me a peach. I don't want that thing where it's just... Yes, like just a want, tabletop. Make, exactly, like someone can just sit on top. No, I just want it like supernatural. Yeah. Like take all of my love handles out and just yes. put some on my hip dips and my bum. So that's why it's not so crazy. It's, yes. it's literally natural because I just told him I want a natural looking silhouette. I don't want anything out of the ordinary because yeah. he does... A lot. He do, you can, I think you can tell him, but also as a doctor, he's very, very honest with you mm. that, listen, I can only take so much. Yes. And because it goes with the elasticity of the skin, mm. how much your skin can take. It's just a lot of factors involved. But I mm. personally said to him, I just want a natural body like I've been to the gym. Yes. So he gave me that. And in your mind, do you have somebody that is that you look up to what their body type is like for you? Somebody that has body goals. I feel like it's going to be crazy because, or it's going to sound conceited, I don't look up to anybody. Mm. I swear. I literally, I'm a, I'm a confident woman. I'm comfortable in my own skin. I love, I love my body. I love how I look. And it was never something that I looked up to somebody. Mm. I felt like I look up to me because mm. I am, at the end of the day, I will never, ever look like that person. Yes. Even if I did surgery, even if I said I wanted to look like... Um, who's this? I love this lady called Cuban Link. Mm. I could never look like her. So I, ha- I can't say, give me what she has. Yes. You have to give me what I want. Yes. So I didn't look up to anybody, nothing like that. I had to be, look up to me and yes. say, whatever that you give me is what I wanted. And I don't know, this is also part of it. I think this is where it also goes to, after the surgery, the psychological part, because sometimes you don't get exactly what you wanted. Mm. So you have to live what he gave you until, unless or something you go back for mm. another round, which people do. Which, at the end of the day, you know, a doctor can't determine how your body's going to respond exactly. to surgery. Exactly. You have documented your journey quite intensively mm. just to get people to see what it's really like. Mm-hmm. One of the things that fascinated me the most is the fact that you can't sit for a really long time. Two months. So you flew to PE, mm-hmm. you did the operation, and you basically had two weeks' notice. Mm-hmm. Was there something that you were told you have to do to prepare for the op? Maybe like how you eat or no alcohol or anything like that? Obviously, when you go for surgery, no alcohol, no blood thinning um, yeah. pills. But food is still the same. Obviously, and funny enough, you have to eat more because with me, when I consulted, I was a bit, I was a bit small. 
Yeah. So I had to gain weight. Yeah. I went from so they have fat. To yeah, take. I have. I went from seventy five to eighty five. So that was that took me like six months because I yeah. don't eat at all. Yeah. So I was excessively drinking like a mad person because I can't eat. So I I get. In the six-month period, I gained, I think, 10 mm-hmm. from 75 to 85. Yeah, is that 10? Yeah, 10. 10 kilos. And then I had to go do my blood test to make sure that I'm okay. Um, and I'm, I'm okay to have surgery. I had to go to a physio to check my breathing. And what else did I have to do? Yeah, that was, that was it. So when you then do the procedure, I mean, you knew before that you wouldn't be able to sit for mm-hmm. a while. Mm-hmm. You had to fly back home. How did you fly home when you can't sit? I was on my knees for two hours on that flight. But there's the part where you have to be buckled up. How did you deal with it? Funny enough, thank God for the... One, one of the flight attendants was a subscriber. So yes. she knew what was happening. Yes. So she was like, you don't have to. Yes. But just be sure that you don't move. Yes. So I think she alerted the other ones and they were like, it's okay. So I literally was like this, but I was floating. I don't know if I'm making sense. No, yeah, I understand yeah. what you So mean. my hands were here. So my hands were literally just... You were basically almost in a very deep squat. Correct. Yes. Yes. So that was for the um, takeoff. And then when the flight was was ready to... What's this when, you, when they allow you to take your seatbelt off? Yes. The, like the flight is in there. I was on my knees. And how, how did the people next to you treat you? No, I had I booked the whole um, row. Three, yeah. Yes. Three thingy, three seats. So there was no one next to me. <laughs> so talk me through how you survived that entire period. Because I know at some point you get a special kind of a seat that mm-hmm. makes you sit on your hamstrings, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. on your upper thigh. Yeah. Upper thigh legs. This part, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So how did you cope? I mean, I think we take for granted how much we sit until somebody says to you, you can't sit. At some point, I think that's when I was, I was diagnosed with maldepression. I think they just tell you the surgery part. They don't tell you the psychological part. Yes. It is crazy. It is the most craziest thing I've ever, ever went through in my life. One morning you wake up and you're fine. The next morning you wake up, you're in that same pain that you started from in the beginning. Mm. So it's like, it's mind, it's yeah. like, what is happening? Am I okay? Am I not okay? And also the constant pain is just driving you insane. Yeah. The f- crazy enough, the fact that you can't sit is going to is going to make you mad. Yes. Oh, I was crazy. So you were lying on your stomach. I was on my stomach all day every day unless I stand up, walk around, go to the bathroom, come back stomach again. How do you go to the bathroom in a squat? <sighs> that's very graphic. <laughs> Tell us. That's that's very graphic. You you squat or you t- you cuz you you can't use the bathroom number 2 for like 2 weeks. What? Yeah. Like, they moved certain things here, so you can't do anything for, like, two yes. weeks. Yes. So, but you're sick because you can't take out everything that is in your stomach for, yes. like, two weeks. So with, the, with going for, to, to, to go to, to urinate, you have to use a, what's this thing? I don't remember. Like a called. funnel. Yeah. That's what you So do. it's a thing that's shaped like this that can point the urine. No, no, no. It is, yo, I showed it on my, you just put a chair yes. and then you... Do your business. When you're done, you just rinse it. And oh, yes, I understand. I just forgot the name of it. I understand. Called, yeah. So I you understand. just put it there. You stand. You're not sitting. You do your business. Yes. When you're done, you just rinse it. Put it there. You're going to use it again. Yes, yeah. yes. So crazy. What was the hardest part of the recovery process? Me being alone. I was mm. alone. Why were you alone? My mom was... I'm, I'm from North Yeah. So my mom was far. Yes. And I'm, I'm all the way in Joburg. Obviously, my friends have jobs. Yes. My mom can come. Because yes. she has a job. She's going to take leave and say she's going away. Yes. And I was alone the whole time. Like, yes. I'm with myself. No one is distracting me. Of course, my phone is here. But I need, like, f- someone physically to yes. be there for me. Yes. So I had to do stuff for myself. But also, yes. I'm a person who, who I don't like much help. Yes. So I didn't ask for it. So I was doing everything myself. But the hardest part was being alone and the recovery. Like, having to wake up, make your own food. The pain is kicking in. You sometimes can't eat. There's foods that I can't eat now after surgery. I can't, I can't stand eggs. I used really? to eat eggs like ma- I was obsessed with eggs. I'd wake up in the morning, make eggs and does it, does it make you feel nauseous or what does it do? It, I, I vomit every time without fail. Wow. I've tried countless times to eat eggs. I can't eat eggs. And I think, yeah, the only part that was very hard for me was recovery mm. and being alone. In terms of the being alone, does that... 
touch on what, you know, uh, got you to experiencing the mild depression. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. that was that was what it was clinically diagnosed because I'm alone the whole time. There's no one. And also, I feel like if you had a partner, it was going to be easier because, you mm-hmm. know, we had their far and then they mm-hmm. come and give you whatever. Yes. But nobody, literally nobody was there. Mm-hmm. But And I'm not saying this in a bad way. Yes, my friends were there, but I just needed somebody mm-hmm. 24-7 with me to be like, are you okay? Do you need anything? No. Did Everything that time was- actually make you question having done the surgery where you're like, should I have done this? Never. Really? Never. Even in your lowest moments? Like she said, when you asked her, were you scared? Were you... Mm. Like I said, when the doctor said, I have a slot on the 8th, I said, send me your account number now, and I sent him that money. I did not... Nothing in my mind was just like, okay, it's happening now. No, I was just like... You were just resolute. The only time that I was not scared, but obviously anxious and whatever, when it was actually time, when they rolled me in to go in for surgery, I was like, no, I'm going back. But I was already high on meds, so I was like, take me out, take me out. They were like, nope, Mm. you're already here. And then it was done. Mm. So I was never, ever scared. So in terms of, you know, if you had to explain to someone why you think you were depressed, as in what was that really about? Is it unresolved issues? What, What do you think the depression was about? Honestly, at this point, I'm still not certain what it was, but it's very psychological. Mm. Like... Like I said, you're not healing quick enough Mm. and you're not seeing results quick enough. You have to be patient because even now, this is not my final form. Mm. Why did I say that like I'm a transformer? (laughs) This is not my final form. So it's it's an ongoing thing. One morning you wake up, your butt is small and then you're just like, what did I do this for? The next morning you wake up, it's so big. You're just like, what is happening? Mm. So it's, it's, it's like... It messes with your mind. It messes with your mind. And then mm. obviously the mind is the most strongest like vessel. And then you're just like, what am I doing? You just go crazy a bit because mm. you don't know what's happening. And the con- the pain is not just, it's consistent. Yes. Yo, the pain is so consistent. Yes. And yes. the fact that you can't sleep properly. And the fact that, I think another thing is I was sleep deprived. Mm. So that was also playing a part in the whole psychological thing. Like, What did you do with the work? I'm a YouTuber. So yes. work. Me just posting something now is just work. Also, yes. I had campaigns lined up. So I did all of my work because I knew that I would be out for a two-month yes. period. So I thinged everything and, like, I work from home, so mm. it's not much of a problem. But I did all of my work two months prior because mm. I knew that I'll be gone. Mm. But, yeah, the, the number one thing that contributed to was just your mind is everywhere. Mm. Do you think some of the medication also made you feel that way? I don't think so. Mm. Because it's just pain meds. Yeah. Yeah. Because I drink them, sleep, wake up. Mm. Drink again, sleep, wake up. Mm. Drink again, sleep. It's just a pattern. Also, if you're not used to always being down and out, mm. it just, because you're not being creative, you're not doing anything. I'm a person who's always, yeah. so now I'm just lying there. It's just too much for me. Yeah. So yeah. everything, smaller things contributed to the whole mind thing. Yeah. Yeah. How would you say you are um, feeling about your body at the moment? I love it. Mm. I'm obsessed with it. Mm. I don't wear clothes at home. Mm. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's a... Listen, you can say we're, we're, we're very open in this I'm a, space. I'm obsessed with it. So you are very happy with the um, work that's been done. Um, the, the first, like I said, the first, I think first month, I was just not sure about it. Mm. Also, because I was just like, like I said, you wake up one morning, it's big. The next morning, it's small. One minute, your waist is, is, is big. And also, I think it goes to back, it's... It's like PTSD Mm. because you were bullied so much Mm. that you wanted to be so perfect that nothing goes wrong. I was at a point where I was measuring myself every single day. Mm. You got a bit obsessive with it. Exactly. I was like, is this body dysmorphia? Like, what is happening? I was literally obsessing over it. And there was a time where I even started taking... I ate... um, I think I ate bread. But also they give you a diet that you're supposed to eat after surgery. Mm. So I had bread. Oh, I lost my mind. I went, I remember I went to Pick and Bay. I bought, um, what's this, Brooklux. I ate them. And I was just running. Because you were worried. Because I was like, I need to take everything out. Yes. Yeah. Yes, so yes. it's just, yeah, mm. it's just mm. crazy. But I love my body. I love my body so much. I, would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for anything. But I'll never go back. For you, do you love your body right now? And did you also have moments where the things you were doing to help lighten your skin were messing with your mind? Yes, I love my body so much. The only thing that was messing with my mind, it was 
about my dad. Uh, he passed on 2017, mm. and then he knew me as the Awerani then, mm. not the lighter one in skin. So it messed with my mind in such a way that last year in September, I had to go to visit to the graveyard. Mm. And then I also posted it on my social media on TikTok where mm. I was telling him, uh, Dad, and in there, Awerani, mm. it's me, remember me. Uh, I came here to show you that I've changed. Mm. And then I'm lighter in complexion. Please don't forget me when you bless other kids. Mm. So it was it was hard to to to, to go there mm. to the graveyard to tell him that I've changed because he never knew me as the me that I am now. So mm. somehow it was playing with my mind that maybe he's not ble I'm not blessed or I'm not I haven't reached that stage where I want because the ancestors forget me. Mm. So I, it, it has to, to be done that I go to the graveyard and introduce myself to my ancestors. It's interesting you say that because in many ways you say I'm exactly the same person. I just altered the outside. But you're also worried that your ancestors are not going to recognize you and remember you. So why would you say that worry is still there? The worry was still there because I haven't go to the to the cemetery mm. or to the graveyard to introduce the new me. Mm. So to me, it plays an important part to go and to introduce myself to mm. the change that happened, that happened to, to, to my skin. So mm. it was important to go and do myself a ceremony to mm. the ancestors so that they accept me that, oh, it's our child. She's just changed the skin, but she is still the same person that we know mm. and that we love. And do you think the ancestors have accepted you? They did. Mm. Mm. I think they did. That's why I'm here. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> and in terms of how people respond to you, how do people treat you now that they see your skin's been lighter, like where you live, the people that know you, your family? Yes. Uh, most especially down home in Venda, they always say, wow, you, 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 you were beautiful when you were than now. Mm. My response to them always, I say, I, I, I was beautiful then and now I am beautiful. Beauty is about the choice. Mm. Who you see yourself then and who you embrace yourself with the now, you're still the same. If it makes you sleep at peace, and when you look on the mirror and say, yes, I am still the same. Mm. So I call myself beautiful, whether I was black then or I'm lighter in skin now, mm. I'm still the same Awerani. It's just that I'm different now mm. in a light skin. Mm. Mm. How do people respond to you in your new body? I mean, you've been quite open about it, but it's, it's different when they've known you a certain way to now knowing you as you are. Those close to me have embraced me. Mm. So I really don't care about the other ones. That, because some people were were all for it. Obviously, it's social media. People have different opinions. Yes. what they think. But I don't dwell on them because what am I going to do with your? I don't care. What are some but, of the the things that they say that aren't positive? Um, I left social media because of that. But some of them were, oh, they were like, what was the point of surgery if your bum is not going to be big? And I was like, but that was not what I wanted. Yes. I wanted a natural-looking silhouette. I did yes. not want that big thing mm. behind me. Mm. So there was a lot of that, yeah, she wasted money. What was she going to do? She doesn't even look good. But, you know, it's always the fake accounts yeah. that you, whatever. So the people that are close to me, my closest friends, my mom, oh, they embraced it. They, yeah. they, they loved all of it because I think, like I said, the close people know what you went through and they know how you feel about it. Mm. So they were happy for me. I didn't care anything else about anything mm. else. How do, you, how do you feel about women who are, or people who are darker skin toned? Uh, uh, first of all, uh, everybody have a choice and beauty is about accepting the inner person to the outer person and then how you want to, to look like on the outer person. Mm. So you don't have to, to, to compete with the community outside. If you, you accepted who you are inside and know yourself that you are beautiful, obviously you don't have to, to wait for somebody to compliment you that you are beautiful mm. or with who you are or whatever. It's about you, mm. the self. Mm. And for you, um, is your journey a very personal one or your general feeling on how women's bodies should look? <sighs> Everybody looks different. Mm. Everybody looks different. We have thick, we have skinny, we have we have we have we have everything. 
So I will never, ever go to another woman and tell her that she's supposed to look a certain way yeah. because she is comfortable in her own skin. Mm. Mm. So I'm also comfortable in my own skin. What I look like is entirely up to me. It's a personal thing. Mm. It'll never be me instigating or me wanting because now I'm projecting. Yeah. I will never, ever project because I knew at some stage in my life I felt a certain way and I would never want to do that to another woman, mm. especially a woman. So with me, this is for me personally and whatever a certain woman wants to look like, let them be because they're comfortable in their own mm. skin. So what you look like is what you look like. What I like, what I look like is what I chose mm. to look like. So no, this is not the beauty mm. standard. Beauty is you, yes. beauty is she, beauty mm. is me, yes. beauty is everybody. So I wouldn't want people to be going out of their way to say they must look like me yes. to uphold the standard, never. Would you do more surgery? Um, this one in particular, never again, mm. never. But, I don't know, if I have kids, I might want to do something to my breasts, I'm not mm. sure. But yeah, mm. this, this one I'm done, I'm just maintaining right now. Mm. But I definitely look into um, a breast reduction. Yes, yeah. yes. Ladies, thank you so much for coming to share your stories and thank share you your journeys. Having. Thank you. One of the things I take out of this is, you know, you aren't imposing anything on anybody. And also how for you, it's all about having the choice to choose mm -hmm. how you want to look and what is working for you mm -hmm. and that you do love yourselves the way that you are, but uh, I'd like to take advantage of the enhancements that are available to you. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that you're able to take the attitude of not caring what people think, because sometimes we care a little too much about mm -hmm. what people think. Thank you so much to Thanks. the both of you for coming to share your stories and journeys. Thank you, Thank you for having me. Hashtag unpacked with Rilebukhile. If you had the opportunity to change something about yourself, would you do it? Because it's easy to say, I would never do this until you can afford to do it. So maybe you're sitting somewhere, sitting somewhere busy judging a person saying, how could they change this about their body? Because it's not actually an option to you. And I think these are the types of conversations we need to have. What I love about our discussion is that really beauty is within the eyes of the beholder, but also within how you feel about yourself. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a good night. Next time on Unpacked. While cleaning the gun, he didn't know you were in the room with him. No. Accidentally, he pulled the trigger and I was shot. I never got a chance to see how God created me mm. as I got shot at the age of three. So do you remember when you woke up from the coma? I said to her, did he shoot me again? for watching Unpacked with Rileb Khile Mamoja. Make sure you subscribe to my channel where you can get to watch more episodes. But more importantly, you can be part of our online community. Comment down below, share with us who you'd like to see on the show, what story you'd like us to discuss. We love engaging with you. Keep it coming and don't forget to subscribe.